How you doing everyone? It's Kevin. I'm back with another video. Um, I said I was going to build a blast furnace, a foundry. I'm not sure exactly what they're called, but I'm sure you guys will let me know. Um, I was going to build my blast furnace out of this propane tank. This is a very old propane tank. Somebody threw it away a long time ago and I thought it would be about the perfect size for me to stick underneath my homemade forge as a small blast furnace. Uh, we want to be able to uh, melt copper, aluminum, and brass in it. Or lead. Which really don't need that for lead. But anyhow we can do it. So I'm going to show you some of the materials I'm going to be using to build this thing. Now I see a lot of people, I've been watching a lot of videos on YouTube and uh, I'm not real happy with what I'm seeing on there. Um, so I'm going to do my own version of a uh, blast furnace, the, the way I want to build it, and we'll see if it'll last more than just a few days or a few burns. I want something that will last me for a decent amount of time. Now, you're talking to a guy right now that doesn't know anything about blast furnaces, so we're going to see how this project goes. But I will show you what I'm going to be using. Let me get over there and show you. All right, if you guys see me build the forge, uh, you see me using these brick. And I have a bunch of these brick. And they're fire brick, and they're about two inches thick. I think they're pretty good brick. I was looking in the forge over there when it was burning. Man, they're cherry red. They look like they can withhold some, some heat. So, the tank is round. So what I did... As I drew a circle on this piece of wood, which I thought was the about the size, which I think it's 12 inches around the out or inside diameter of this thing, I think is about 12 inches. So I drew a circle, and then I drew a circle on the inside where I thought maybe the brick would go to. Uh, I just laid the brick up there without cutting them, and they come into the inside circle. And then after I cut them, I gained an extra half inch. So I cut these two bricks just like this. I'm going to try to make a circle, a sort, a semi-circle, around this. Now, I know I'm going to have to put some mortar between these guys. So I had bought this stuff here. This is a high heat furnace cement. Now, I use this on my forge, on my coal forge, right around the top of the rotor, which I call the brake drum. It is sort of a brake drum, but anyhow, there was little vents that went around there. And I took this stuff and filled it up. Well, I've been burning that thing for a long time. I made quite a few knives in it, and this stuff is still there. And it's just as hard as the day I put it in. So I'm going to be using this stuff for the bottom and where I mortar the joints together. When I mortar these joints together, I'm going to be using this this cement here in the the bucket. The only thing is, this stuff is about 16 something a bucket, 17 bucks, you get a half a gallon. I mean, that's not a lot of mortar, but we're not doing a huge space. I was actually literally going to use this mortar for the whole entire thing which I thought six of these buckets would do it and would be just over a hundred dollars but I thought since I had these nice brick why not cut them each one of them I'll cut this shape out of each one of them and I make them go all the way around in a circle I'll still have a semi decent circle and yet I'll be able to mortar between them and save me a lot of money so my goal is today is to get all of these brick cut both sides, both sides cut like this here. And I'm just using a diamond bit blade, I'll show you the blade. I'm hoping that this thing finishes these up. This is an old blade I've had around for a long time and it's a diamond bit blade for cutting concrete. And we used to use this for tuck pointing. Uh, when we would tuck point uh, houses, we'd use this blade to go in and cut the mortar out of there. But it works really well 
on these brick. So I'm going to get to cutting these guys and show you how it goes here. All right, we're going to go ahead and get ready to cut. I would suggest wearing some type of a respirator so you're not breathing this and some kind of eye protection. Alright guys, I just wanted to show you what I'm doing here. I got a bunch of them cut, but what I do is I just cut slices in them. Then I come through here and knock them out. And just keep tapping them out. rough on them because they might break off just go nice and easy and take your time when you come over to the edge just follow your pencil mark go right down that pencil mark nice light taps real nice light taps They'll come right off of there now if I want that smooth down a little bit I just take my grinder just like if I was grinding a piece of metal. And I'll just sit here and go right on the edge. I don't like to do too much of that with my camera because all this dust gets in all the cracks and stuff. But I just wanted to show you how I was doing it. Well. This is the last one. Now, I know I'm not perfect on these things, but I guarantee you by no means am I perfect. But I got them as close as I possibly can to be in a circle. So this one here is just a little bit different size than them ones in there, but I'm not uh, real good at this stuff. But it does fit, and it is a, a semi-decent circle. Let's take a look down in there. I mean, I don't think it's that bad. Would this thing work uh, as far as a blast furnace would go? Now, I know I have to... I'm going to have to cut a hole in here. I'm going to have to cut a hole in here for my air somewhere for my gas burner to come in there. But I'll just do it the same way I cut the brick. And I'll notch it out and get it to go in an angle there a little bit. I'm just hoping that that thing's big enough for the crucible that I got. I got a crucible. I think it's a size 4. And I think that hole in there. This is 6 inches round in there. So. And it's supposed to fit a pop can. So this. Hopefully this thing's going to be big enough. Uh, so. That's what the inside looks like. Now this should be. A little better. Than using uh, the refractory, all refractory mortar, hopefully. And what I was going to do is just put mortar in the cracks. Uh, and just mortar all up the cracks and do the whole bottom. I'll do a couple brick in the bottom and do some mortar. And now i got to find some way of putting a little drain down in there. So it's, it's going to be a treat. It's going to be a good project. That's the kind we like, a little tough. But we'll get her done, I guarantee you. Bye. Well, everyone, that's how I did the stone for the inside of my blast furnace. And I'm going to be putting this, hopefully, inside this propane tank. Now, the cement that I'm going to use to put these together and to build the bottom out of is going to be... I'm going to give you guys a close-up of this so you can look it up online. It is uh, a high-heat furnace cement. And I picked this up at Lowe's a while back, but they I don't think they have it anymore. But I'm still going to check in there. I know Home Depot has it, but I think you have to order it. It says not in store. So uh, you're probably going to have to order it if you get it out of the store. Now, I've had a lot of people say they had trouble with them when they ordered them. 
they would get them and they'd be busted open and stuff. So what I'm going to do with mine is I'm going to have mine, if I have to order it, I'm going to have it shipped to the store. So when I pick it up at the store, it had better not be busted or we're just not going to take it. So um, that'll be the cement. You've seen me cut the stone. These, I think, are going to hold a lot more heat than any of this refractory mortar these guys are sticking inside of these uh, blast furnace. I would rather use something that I know is going to last for a long time than I would just to hurry up and get it done, pay a bunch of money, so a bunch of chemicals i got to mix together uh, to make uh, refractory mortar. So these brick are going to serve me well. I'm just going to use the mortar that I'm buying here for in the cracks. Just all the cracks, that's all I'm going to use in the cracks is that mortar. So this is going to be part one on it. Now, the reason why I was using a propane tank, I built a new forge. If you guys didn't see the new forge, over there is the new forge. I'll show you what I'm going to do. I want this uh, blast furnace to be able to set on the bottom. I want the blast furnace to be able to set down here so I can pull it out, set it on the ground. It'll already be plumbed up to my gas. I'll have valves and everything, turn it on, turn it off, and then store it back away on the uh, forge there. So that was kind of why I was using the propane tank. It fits in there perfect. So this is going to be part one. The next part, I'll be cutting the tank over. If you never cut a propane tank, i got a video on my channel you can watch of cutting how to clean this tank before you cut it. Get it prepped before you cut it because you don't want to just cut into this tank especially if it has gas in it it's not going to work you're not you're not going to make it so uh watch the video on that like i said if you want to see the ford built i got one on it and this like i said is going to be the first video clip on this one here and then uh just keep watching i'm going to keep posting them it takes me a couple days at least a couple days to get a video on so uh I'd like to tell everybody thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe, leave me thumbs up, thumbs down, or a comment if you'd like. Till next time.